Playoff piggies! Welcome to From Center Ice. My name is Courtney and my friends, today is a fantastic day because it is day one of the playoffs for the Rockford Ice Hogs. That's right, the Rockford Ice Hogs, the AHL affiliate of the Chicago Blackhawks, have made it to the postseason and they are in the first round. They did not manage to get into that third spot in the central to get a bye in the first round, but it doesn't matter because they are in the playoffs and that is all that matters. The AHL is kind of strange with their scheduling. The first round is a best of three series and all three games, if it should take all three, will take place in Rockford at the BMO Harris Bank Center. Now that's probably a good thing for our Rockford Ice Hogs, but it's still very strange, but that's the AHL for you. Their opponent is the Texas Stars. Funny enough, the team that kicked them out of the playoffs the last time they made it, and that was in the Western Conference Final. Thankfully, the Toronto Marlies went on to beat the Texas Stars in the Calder Cup Final, so they did not win the cup. The Marlies did, but the wound is still fresh from when the stars beat the piggies last time. So I know that I am looking for some redemption here in this first round series. Whichever team that wins between the Rockford Ice Hogs and the Texas Stars will go on to face the Chicago Wolves, of course. That's just how it was always going to be. But let's take a look at these two teams heading into tonight's game one of the first round of the 2022 Calder Cup playoffs. Both the Rockford Ice Hogs and the Texas Stars were teams that played 72 games this season. Some teams played 76. Again, the AHL is very weird with their scheduling. That's just how it goes. The Ice Hogs had a record of 37, 34, and 1. That was good for 79 points and fourth place in the Central Division. The Texas Stars had a record of 32, 28, 6, and 6. That was good for 76 points and fifth place in the Central Division but they do come into tonight on a four-game win streak because they were playing for their playoff lives down the stretch. Meanwhile, the Ice Hogs lost their final two games of the regular season. Now, I'm not going to make a huge deal about that. The Ice Hogs had already locked up their playoff spot. If they had won on Friday against the Admirals, they would have been able to jump up to that third spot. If they would have gone to overtime, there was still a chance. It didn't happen, so they get the fourth place spot, have to play play in the first round, but like I said, they're in the playoffs. That's all that matters. Now, when it comes to goal differential, the Ice Hogs scored 223 goals this season while allowing 221 goals. So they actually ended up with a positive goal differential at plus two, and it was certainly not like that for a while during this season. The Ice Hogs really stepped up their game down the stretch to secure that playoff spot. And while they did lose those final two games, Again, this team has been playing very well. Meanwhile, in Texas, the Stars scored 219 goals this season while allowing 230 for a minus 11 goal differential. But seeing as how they were at the bottom part of the Central Division for a lot of this season, that's actually pretty impressive from the team from Texas. They do have quite a few guys who can put up some points, so the Ice Hogs are really going to have to be on their defensive game. Unfortunately, two big pieces for the Ice Hogs are likely to miss this entire series, one being Ian Mitchell. He's out for about a week at least with a right wrist injury. The second is Brett Connolly, who is out for at least a month with a left knee injury. Now, it's not all doom and gloom. The Ice Hogs have missed different pieces throughout the year, whether due to them being injured or being called up to the Blackhawks. They've also missed these two guys specifically at different times during the season and have played well without them. Of course, it would be very nice to have them to start the playoffs, but should the Ice Hogs get out of this round, there is at least a chance we see Ian Mitchell come back for round number two. And for Brett Connolly, we will just have to wait and see. Now, some good news. Alec Regula did return to the Ice Hogs from the Blackhawks. So that's definitely a big boost on the blue line for this Ice Hogs team. He can fill in some of that role that Ian Mitchell has 
has left due to his injury. So you can look to Regula and my boy Isaac Phillips to have big minutes on the blue line for the Ice Hogs as well as veteran defender Ryan Stanton. Now maybe some more exciting news if you are a Blackhawks fan and just here to hear about the prospects. The Ice Hogs received two other reinforcements in last summer's first round pick Nolan Allen and Kirby Doc's brother, Colton Doc, has also joined the Ice Hogs team. I'm not sure if they will get into the lineup in game number one or when and if they will get into the lineup seeing as they did just join the team, but it is an exciting prospect either way, having them around the team with the possibility of them jumping into the lineup. Now let's take a look at the top scorers for the Rockford Ice Hogs this season. Number one, of course, rookie of the year, Lucas Reichel. He now holds the record for most rookie points for the Ice Hogs, passing Vinny Henestrosa. Through 56 games this season, Lucas Reichel scored 21 goals and added 36 assists. That is good for 57 points and the most points on the Ice Hogs roster from a rookie. The kid is good. In the number two slot, we have Dylan McLaughlin, the kid that just does everything for the Ice Hogs. Through 55 games this season, Dylan McLaughlin put up 13 goals and he added 29 assists. That would be a total of 42 points. He is also very good at the faceoff dot. When the Ice Hogs need to win a key faceoff, be it on the power play, the penalty kill, at the end of a period, whatever, you can bet that Anders Sorensen is going to throw Dylan McLaughlin out there to win that faceoff. Number three, we have Brett Connolly. Through 37 games this season, Connolly scored 17 goals and added 18 assists. That was good for 35 points, but of course, like I mentioned before, he is out injured with that left knee injury. That is a big hole for the Ice Hogs, but they've won games without him. It would be a lot better if they did have him in the lineup, but they're just going to have to make do. In the number four slot, we have Ian Mitchell. Of course, as I mentioned before, he is also injured, but through 57 games in the regular season, Ian Mitchell scored 11 goals for the Ice Hogs, and he added 24 assists for 35 points, and he played all over the ice, all sorts of minutes. He was a big, big key to this Ice Hogs roster this season. Again, they've won games without him, but the sooner they can get Ian Mitchell back and healthy, the better it will be for the Ice Hogs. Number five, we have Mike Hardman, who as of late has really upped his game. He was good all throughout the season, but as the regular season was winding down, he really stepped it up a notch. Through 43 games this season, he scored 19 goals and added 13 assists. That was good for 32 points. Number six, we have the hardest working guy out on the ice in Josiah Slavin, also the shorthanded king of the year for the Ice Hogs. Through 49 games, Josiah Slavin put up 18 goals and added 14 assists. That was good for 32 points, and also much like Mike Hardman, as the season was winding down, his level of play went up. If the Ice Hogs needed a clutch goal more often than not, Josiah Slavin was involved. I'm very interested to see what he can do in the playoffs. Should the Ice Hogs go far, he is going to be a key factor for the team. The Blackhawks really may have found a gem there with Josiah Slavin. Number seven, and this just warms my heart, we have Michael Tepley. Now, last year, his rookie season with the Ice Hogs, he could not by a goal. He wasn't playing poorly by any means, but he was so snake bitten. Things were just not going his way no matter what. But this season he played 60 games for the Ice Hogs and he scored 13 goals and added 18 assists for 31 points. He played on a line with Lucas Reichel for a lot of the second half of the year and they looked really good together. They definitely formed some chemistry along with Andre Altabarmakian on the other wing. So with injuries and whatnot, I don't know if that line is going to be the one that kicks off this game one for the Ice Hogs, but if they are not together to start and things don't end up going well, you can definitely bet that they will be put back together because they have looked really, really good together on the ice. Which brings us to number eight, the other guy I just mentioned, Andre Altabarmakian. Much like Michael Tepley, he was also pretty snake bitten last year. He did get some goals here and there, but you can tell there was a lot more to his
his game than what his stat line would have suggested. Through 65 games this season, he put up 10 goals. He also added 21 assists for 31 points. And again, rounded out that very good top line of Lucas Reichel, Michael Tepley, and himself, Altabar Maki. In the number nine slot, we have Evan Barrett. He played 63 games for the Ice Hogs this season, scoring 14 goals and adding 14 assists for 28 points. And while his points aren't something to ignore, he's also very good on the defensive side of the puck, and he's one of those guys who's always just in the right spot. He's a dependable player. He will kill some penalties for you. He will get those greasy goals in front of the net. He has also scored some pretty clutch goals for the Ice Hogs this year. He's another guy that I'm also very interested to watch in the playoffs. Because you know, when the playoffs roll around, there's always those certain guys who really step up their game that maybe you don't see that full effort from them in the regular season. And while Evan Barrett doesn't really take shifts off and he does always give a lot of effort while he's out there, I feel like he could be one of those guys who is a playoff performer, especially since depth is very key in the playoffs. And rounding out the top 10, we have defenseman Wyatt Kelnick. Through 52 games this season, Kelnick put up seven goals and he added 20 assists for 27 points. With Ian Mitchell out of the lineup, unfortunately, you can probably bet that Kalnick will see a lot of power play time. So there are your top 10 scorers for the Ice Hogs. Let's pop down and take a look at the goaltenders. We'll start with Kale Morris. He's not likely to see action here in the first round. Colin Delia was the other man in net for most of the season until, of course, the trade deadline when the Blackhawks traded Marc-Andre Fleury to Minnesota. Colin Delia got called up to back up Kevin Lankinen. So Kale Morris has only played seven games for the Ice Hogs this season. Season. He has a record of 2-4-0, and oh, which isn't great, but he has had some really nice moments in net for them. He has a 3.15 goals against average and a 9.05 save percentage. Now, while his record might not be the best, I wouldn't feel uncomfortable if Kale had to be put into the net in the playoffs. He has shown a lot of promise. He had a good season last year, but coming up at the end of the year after playing in the ECHL with the Indy Fuel for the majority of the season. He didn't really get into a full rhythm with the Ice Hogs, but again, he didn't play poorly. Which brings us to starting goaltender and the guy that I named the early season MVP and who was given the MVP title by the team along with Dylan McLaughlin, Arvid Soderblom. He has been the back bone of the Rockford Ice Hogs this year, and it is his rookie season. He's played 38 games for the Ice Hogs. He has a record of 21, 15, and 2. He has a 2.76 goals against average and a 919 save percentage with two shutouts on the year. Now, if you are a Blackhawks fan and you have not watched any Ice Hogs games this year, but you're here to hear about the prospects, hello! I know that you have seen Arvid Soderblom in a few games in the NHL, and maybe you haven't been impressed with his play, but I am here to tell you that for the Rockford Ice Hawks, he has been massive. And if Soderblom is on top of his game, that is fantastic news for the Ice Hawks. And if they're gonna go anywhere, he's gonna carry them there. The Ice Hawks have a lot of skill up front. Their defense has been great this year as well, but it all comes down to Arvid Soderblom and net. Can he do it? I think so. Will he do it? We shall see. Now, I'm not going to go through the full top 10 for Texas because this video is getting kind of long and I have a game to get to here pretty soon, but I will mention that the Texas Stars' top scorer this season was Anthony Lewis. He played 66 games for the Stars. He scored 24 goals and added 31 assists for 55 points and he is a former Ice Hog that loves to score on the team. So the defense and again, Arvid Soderblom are going to have to make sure that Anthony Lewis does not end up with a bunch of scoring opportunities. If I were to put a bet down on who scores the first goal for the Texas Stars in this series, I would put money on Anthony Lewis because it's always the former Ice Hogs. I'm not sure who is going to be in net for Texas, but but Matthew Murray, their rookie goaltender, has carried a lot of the load in the final part of their playoff push, which is funny.
funny to say, seeing as he has only played six games for the Texas Stars, but he has a record of five and one, along with a 1.68 goals against average and a 947 save percentage. So again, if I was going to bet who was going to be in net for the Stars, it would probably be him. Let's hope that his beginner's luck has a worn out now that they have made the playoffs. Either way, we should see some good goaltending in this series. Hopefully, at least from the Rockford side. Now, when it comes to how the Icehogs have played this season, there have been a lot of pluses to their game. There have also been some minuses, but let's go over the positives first, heading into this series. As I mentioned, goaltending has been probably their biggest strength this year. Be it Arvid Soderbloom or Colin Delia and now Kale Morris, the guys have always been pretty reliable in net. There haven't been many goalie losses throughout the season. Of course, there's been some goals here or there that they're going to want back, but that's just normal for hockey. It is a long season. It is bound to happen. But more often than not, the goaltenders were a bright spot for the Icehawks. And the good news for the goaltenders is that the team defense in the defensive zone greatly improved from last season. They have done a great job of locking down games if they get the lead, and they do keep a lot of the shots to the outside so their goalies can see the puck and have time to react to the shots. Now, they have been outshot a lot of games this year, but a lot of those shots have not been high quality. And if you were to ask the goaltenders, I'd think they would tell you they would prefer a large quantity of shots over a bunch of quality shots. The defense for the Ice Hogs has more experience this year. Last year, it was a lot of rookies on the back end. This year, they have one more year under their belt and I'd have to say all of them have improved. Most of them are also willing to jump up in the play, and it usually doesn't come back to bite the team as the forwards are also responsible and they will cover their defensemen on the blue line if one of them does happen to jump up. Another thing that the Ice Hogs have done a lot better this season compared to last is they are not afraid to drive to the net. That was a big qualm I had with this team last year. Get to the net! This year, there have been a lot of goals scored in tight on the opposing goaltender. They really showed that ability to get those clutch goals, like I mentioned before, be it Mike Hardman, Josiah Slavin, Evan Barrett. Up and down the lineup, guys have been chipping in points and goals and setting up plays when it matters most. Which brings me to the final positive point I want to make about this year's Rockford Ice Hogs is there is no quit on this team. They play until the final horn goes. Even if they're losing by a couple goals, they won't sit back. They will keep trying to score, even if it only gets them, say, within two goals or within three goals. They will still be trying. They don't give up, which goes back to their ability to score these clutch goals and put themselves back into games, push games to overtime. And they've been very good in overtime and in the shootout this year. Unfortunately, no shootouts in the playoffs, but seeing this team not quit on any games has been so refreshing and so nice to watch. Now for the negatives of the season. They can let their emotions get the better of them. This is something we saw a lot when they played the Iowa Wild for whatever reason. That team is really able to get underneath their skin and then the Ice Hogs will just have trains to the penalty box. And there have been a few too many games with those trains to the penalty box. Thankfully, their penalty kill has been pretty good this season. They sit fourth in the central on the PK, killing 81.9% of their penalties. But the Ice Hogs really have to keep their emotions in check and not force themselves to kill those penalties. They are still very young. This is the first playoff action in the AHL a lot of these guys have seen. And with some of those key injuries with Ian Mitchell and Brett Connolly, this is a huge experience for them. But going back to those emotions, they really have to learn to keep them in check. Maybe their youth will come in hand. They will be more energized if they do happen to go deep, that would be great, but they are still very young. But even though they are young, they have proved time and time again throughout the year, like I said, 
they just don't quit. This feels like a mentally strong squad and a team that is playing for each other. They have a purpose every night and that is to get wins, which is also pretty impressive from a young team. And finally, I said the team defense has been very improved and it's been very good in the defensive zone and the goaltenders have been very strong and the brightest spot on the season for the Ice Hogs, but sometimes it's those second chances, the rebound chances that they get scored on. Not always. The defenders do bail out their goaltenders more often than not, but there's just some times where they can't clean up those rebounds and it ends up as a goal against. So if I have any huge keys going into the playoffs, this first round matchup against the Texas Stars, number one, they gotta keep their emotions in check. They have to play their game, not have these trains to the penalty box because Texas has a lot of guys who can score goals and put up points. While the Ice Hogs PK has been good, you don't want to test that out too much. Number two, keep going to the net, keep driving to the net, pressure offensively, get goals on the board. If they can get the first goal of the game, they are in a fantastic spot. That seems like a no-brainer, but with this Ice Hogs team ability to shut down their opponents and really hold on to leads and help out their goaltender, getting that first goal of the game is important. Then they don't have to waste too much energy trying to chase the game, even though they have been able to come back in those games. But let's get on the board first, keep pressuring them offensively, and don't let up. And finally, keep that defensive game strong, but help out the goaltenders, clean up those rebounds, don't give Texas any second chances. This is going to be a tough matchup. The Texas Stars have been playing for their lives. They have basically been in the playoffs for two months now. The Ice Hawks spot wasn't totally secure until they did lock it up, so they have been playing meaningful games as well. They haven't just coasted to the end here, but they did split their season series, it's usually a tough matchup when these two teams go head to head. And of course, as I pointed out at the top of this video, the Texas Stars kicked the Ice Hogs out of the playoffs in 2018. So it's going to be an interesting series. It's going to be a fun series. I am so happy to see the Rockford Ice Hogs back in the playoffs. I will be here to recap game number one and game number two and game number three, if it is necessary. The first game is tonight, Wednesday night. They play again Friday and then again, if needed, on Saturday. So this video is very long. I have to get this edit done. Then I have to head down to the BMO Harris Bank Center to watch game number one. So that is all from me here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so very much for watching. If you would like to hear more from me or from Center Ice, head on over to fromcenterice.com or you can follow us on social media all of those links are down in the description for you. All of that being said, thank you so very much again for tuning in. Let's hope for the best for our piggies, our Blackhawks prospects. It is playoff time. Let's go Ice Hogs. Bye guys.